I think art is the way of letting our emotions come out in a way that will be healthy, constructive, and conducive, not just to our well-being, but to other people's well-being and wellness. As a social worker, I run groups, I do individual therapy. I also work in community settings at times with larger communities. And art to me is a tool that we can use to express ourselves. I began to express myself at a young age. The experience of coming to a new country, witnessing certain things, learning about the injustices happening in the world, all of that was a little bit traumatic for me. So I became a poet, a writer. I used to write and express myself through poetry to such a point that I would need to wake up in the middle of the night to write something because it needed to come out of me. SEL, which stands for Social Emotional Learning, is our ability to cultivate self-awareness, social awareness, and allow us to consider the perspectives of others. When we're talking about self-awareness, we're talking about being aware of the thoughts, the emotions, and the reactions that we have and that we feel within ourselves. And when we talk about social awareness, it's about being attentive or paying attention to the reactions and the emotions that others might be having. And when we cultivate both self-awareness and social awareness, it then naturally allows us to consider the opinions and the perspectives of others as well. Every day, we are presented with challenges. So in order to live our daily lives in an increasingly complicated, complex, challenging world, we want to develop those skills that will just help us manage our own emotions, be more resilient to the things that happen to us. All of the emotions that we have, sadness, anger, worry, all of these other emotions that sometimes don't feel too good are also here for a purpose and a reason. Not giving them space and time in our bodies, in our lives, in our minds, is I think harmful ultimately and will counter well-being and wellness in our lives. I think social emotional learning helps us with that. And it helps us also develop the cognitive skills necessary to be able to make decisions. Art is one of the best tools for social emotional learning. It activates in us so many different things. There is the act of observing that I think can bring out in us a lot of things connected to like ourself, who we are, our relationship to these things can come up. Observing a work of art can also allow us to think about themes connected to social awareness or relationships. As an educator, I feel like SEL allows us to talk about societal and human conditions, specifically talking about artworks and artists who address these topics. The way we teach, it allows us to have the students put themselves in a place where they can understand what the artist is trying to save and also trying to see what's happening in the artworks. But more than anything else, they're able to see why it's relevant to their lives and to have conversations about that. We hear from teachers all the time how much their students need these skills and also how much it improves outcomes in the classroom when students' social-emotional learning is addressed. So when I'm planning a lesson that is considering social emotional learning, one of the things I think about the most is how each stop and each artwork scaffolds on top of itself and builds knowledge. For the first artwork, I might focus on students' emotional and inner selves and then help the next artwork build on that and help them focus on others and community. And then once they are comfortable thinking about that and talking with each other about that, then we can think about the world around them and the systems. In school and teacher programs, we teach uh, through inquiry-based learning, which aligns really well with social-emotional learning. We wanted to design a lesson that touches on the idea of self, relationships to others, and community. So you're facing the painting? So when I started planning the stop, I really wanted to give students an opportunity to connect with their emotions, but also connect their emotions to what they were seeing in the painting. Particularly, I was focusing on the color. And choose one that tells you how you're feeling today and go back to the painting. And I would like you to find one area in the painting where the colors or something in that area of the painting connects to that feeling word. I was inspired by different tools and books that are out there that do that, such as the mood meter or children's books that help students understand emotions by connecting them to color. But I wanted to really give students a little bit more agency in the process. I saw the colors over here. I seen the little pink spots and the little green lines. And the kind of like the little orange right there. I picked relief because you're in a peaceful place, there's no noise, there's no people in your ears, it's just like no talking, it's just peaceful. 
the outcomes were really interesting because what I found was that students would often connect the same color to different emotions or connect the same emotion to different colors. It just shows that there are so many personal connotations and cultural ideas about color that students bring that it's really important to have them make those connections rather than make those connections for them. Everybody can now put your marker. So if your word, so if you were looking over here, you can put the point of your marker. Just put it wherever on the painting you want. This is kind of your place, your way to do this. So Another critical part of social emotional learning is being able to take the perspective of others. When we consider other people's opinions, thoughts about any given topic, it only serves to help us develop our own self-awareness and our own resilience. My goal for Street Dresden was to have students look at this artwork by Kirchner. And more than anything, I wanted them to be able to relate to the figures that were in the painting. And eventually, I wanted them to be able to relate to each other. I wanted the, the students to choose a figure from the painting and you know, put themselves in that figure's position. How would the figure have felt? What may the figure have been thinking? What may have been happening in that situation? What were they doing? That way they can start building that relationship with the figure that they see. When you look at this, when you were taking a look, what kind of place do you think this is? It could be a festival because there's hundreds of people. Because there's hundreds of people. I keep hearing crowding and so many people going on, right? Now, imagine yourself in this spot in between these people. What would it be like if you were there? Now it's like very anxious and crowded because there's a lot of people over in that area. Ah, so compared to being over here where there's no one around, it feels calming. But when you put yourself in the middle of people, you feel anxious. So the painter, Kirchner, used these colors. It was contrasting calm colors with energetic colors and then black. You basically get this mood and you're feeling that like there's so much going on, right? Yeah. But I wanted to take it a step further and build that, uh, create relationship building with the students themselves in the small groups. So I had them um, think about experiences that uh, Kirchner uh, had in moving to a new place. I wanted them to have that conversation with each other. I wanted them to have that sense of comfort and vulnerability and honesty with each other. I shared my experience first to model what, what kind of stories could be told. So I'm gonna share with you a story Oh, when I was maybe two years older than you were. And my family and I just moved from the Philippines to the US. And I was in the airport for the first time in my life. Like, similar to when the artist moved to the city and it was just so crowded and he said he just felt anxious. By them seeing me that I can do this and I asked them to share if they feel comfortable, it kind of evens out the playing field that I take myself out as an authority figure, that I am part of this community, I am part of this group. Hi. Goes like, you know, the road, like a rocket ship going? That's where I went on, and I was like kind of scared because it, it's kind of higher than like a roller coaster. So then I kind of got anxious, but when I got on it, I was like, it wasn't too bad, but still, I got nauseous. When we're talking about social awareness, what I mean by that is our relationship not only with ourselves, but also our relationship with others. So that could be our family, a friend, but it could also be our larger community. It could be our school community, people in our neighborhood, people we work with. When we cultivate our social awareness, what we're really doing is impacting our ability to have positive relationships in the world. What we wanted to do at Kingman was scaffold and go from you know self-awareness to relationships and societal awareness into community. And at Kingman, it was really interesting because the students started off you know, looking at uh, this painting and looking at this artwork, and they were trying to guess what was happening. What do you notice about these people? And what do you think they're doing? Yeah. They're digging potatoes. What more do we notice? They could be helping out like another person on their land. Oh, okay, so they might be so, like, helping. A lot of people is there because they're helping their family plant. Like the lady, she has her baby. She can't do that all alone. She can't dig out all the potatoes by herself. So she's asking her family, cousins, sisters, brothers, to come over there and help her share crops. 
I love that you're thinking of them working together. So after we finished having the conversation about the artwork and provided the contextual details, we encourage the students to engage in an activity we call actors and directors. In this activity, there's one director and the rest of the students are actors where the director tells the actors how they should pose in order to recreate the painting. Leilani, I need you to act like the person behind, behind the um, purple person. In this way, we were really hoping that the students would have an opportunity to connect further with the story of the community that was being told in the painting, but also we wanted them to work together as a community. So they had to listen to each other, they had to listen to the director, and then they had to understand where they were in relation to each other. The hope is that we have these conversations, we engage in these activities, and then hopefully students will then go back to the classroom and have things that they can consider both from their own perspective, but also maybe from the perspective of something they heard a fellow student Three, say. Two, one, action. Oh. I'm sorry, Alice. I see you, I see you, I see you. Cut. <laughs> I'm learning now that SEL is a lifelong journey. It's not something that it's like done and over or that you're able to get to. Who we are, in the world has meaning and history. Talking about and understanding identities and understanding ourselves as, as beings that are interconnected to others matters. This is why we have to talk about these things in schools. Each child that enters any school setting has a way of being in the world that is connected to something else in the world, a history somewhere. Art can help us when it comes to social and emotional learning because it allows us to engage with our lives in a way that maybe we can't another time. So we're able to connect to our past, we're able to connect to our present, and we're able to connect to our future. It just allows us to just express who we are. <laughs>